which was in Oprah that pertained unto Joaz, the uh, advisor. And his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said, Unto him the Lord is with thee. And what do you do also in your situation? We talked about that. Your environment looks different than what God says or what the Word says. The Lord is with me. If God is with me, then why is all this happening? Amen. Amen. You don't have to say it. I know you've asked the question. Mm -hmm. Amen. And if you hadn't taken the boldness or uh, just asked that you thought it, <laughs> well, the enemy brought that thought to your mind. Right. Why or how could God be with me if this is happening to me? Mm -hmm. How could God really be with me? And not only with me, but how could God even be God and allow this to happen? And then he says, I'm with you, or the Lord is with you, thou mighty man of valor. Now we poor, because they were poor at this point. Poor, and uh, things don't look like God is with us. But the Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. The Abiserites were Joseph's heirs and descendants. They were from the Macarites clan, who were known as great soldiers. So he's already known to judge, it's not just it's Joshua 17 and 1. He is from a clan of folk. His lineage uh, are they that, that, are, that are warring people. They are warriors and great soldiers. And so this is what God's bringing him back to, helping him to understand. And we're going to look at this to see that this is where he actually came from in his natural lineage. And so God speaks to him and says, you are a great man of war. You are a mighty man of valor, and I am with you. Amen. Joshua 17 and 1. Are we there? Mm -hmm. All right. The scripture says, there was also a lot for the tribe of Manasseh. For he was the firstborn of Joseph to wait for Makar, the firstborn of Manasseh, or the Macarites. Okay? The father of Gilead, because he was a man of war. Okay? Therefore, he had Gilead and Bashan. There was also a lot for the rest of the children of Manasseh by their families for the children of the Abiezrite, or the uh, uh, Abiazer, who was uh, the, the, the lineage, or that lineage that Gideon came from. Okay? And for the children of Helek, and for the children of Azriel, and for the children of Shechem, and for the children of Hefer, or Hefer, and for the children of uh, Shemida, these were the male children of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, by their family. So they are, first of all, they're blessed. God is distributed property that he promised them. Mm -hmm. So I know, listen, how, how does, because this is what's happening in Joshua, they're receiving what God's promised them, they're coming into the promise, but now my situation looks different than the promise. Mm -hmm. Okay, my situation is totally different than uh, what God began or what's, what was established of old. We don't have land of our own. Mm -hmm. We're being overcome by our enemies, and uh, not only this, but uh, it, it doesn't look like it's going to change even futuristically. Mm -hmm. And so there's really a lack of hope. And then he looks and says, listen, you don't know where you came from. Mm -hmm. You don't really understand what I purposed over you before I even had this conversation with you mm -hmm. through this angel. What you came from, from, from a covenant that I made, mm -hmm. amen, with your forefathers. You were blessed before you got here. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then not only were you blessed, but there was something in you before you got here. You came from fighting folk. You came from people that knew how to go through. Amen. I anointed them to be warriors. You came from people that knew how to do warfare. So you came from people that knew how to make it through what you're going through. That's the, the, the answer to the question, what do you do? You answer to what God says about you. You respond to what the Lord said. It's despite or in spite of what you're feeling or what you're going through, instead of responding to emotion or our environment, we want to respond to what God said. All right. So we can begin to rise up and uh, the Lord can rise up in us. Yes. 
and began to act out or manifest what his will is through us right in the midst of what we're going through. Amen? Amen. All right. So that's what you do when God calls you something different than what's going on around you and inside of you. Right? Uh, the second thing, we're not going to be long today. Uh, you need to get that. That's serious. If I'm running around here yelling, I've been, uh, Holy Spirit's been really pushing me these last few weeks a little different. So if I don't do that today, you just know that the word is just as serious as it was last week. All right, all right. Okay? Uh, you and I must understand the importance and the power of agreeing with God always. Yes. Yes. Agreeing with God yes. always. Yes. Yes. Agreeing with the Lord always. Okay, so this angel comes and he says, the Lord is with you. And he doesn't feel like it. Sometimes we don't either. Amen. He doesn't feel like the Lord is with him. And then he says, oh, mighty man of valor. He's probably looking, wondering, who are you talking to? I'm talking to you. Amen. Get up and begin to get into your real character. Get into your real character. Get into your God-ordained character. Amen. All right, and so that's what we want to do. We want to respond to who God say you are. In this season, in this hour, because we're not going to preach around this, we're going to preach right where we are. You are, you are that individual. God is with you. Regardless of how your situation looks, regardless of how you feel, God is still with you. The Lord is with you. Not only is he with you, but you are that mighty woman, that mighty man of valor. You are that individual. Even when situations don't feel like and they don't look as God has said it, it is as he said. Yeah. And you and I are as he's uh, declared and said we are. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So we can begin to walk in who he said we are. Amen? Yeah. Amen. All right. So I'm not going to push that one too much longer. The Holy Spirit wants you to grab it that you are a mighty woman, a mighty man of valor. Amen. Not only that, but you need to know God is with you. Now, can I, can I help you just right quick? All right. When you have a knowledge of a certain something, you understand certain people are with you, you act a certain way. Uh -huh. All right. When you, listen, when you know somebody's on your team, you respond a certain way. Yeah. 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 That's right. And not only that do we respond a certain way, but it is almost as if we, we respond in that person's state. Yeah. You, know, I'm, you know, I'm not God, but God is with me. The chest is out. The, the, you know, and so we become confident. We do, listen, we do we do that with one another. Yeah. That's right. You get the name dropping amongst folk. And that's the, that's the issue. Listen, a man of failure, y'all grab how much money he got. I don't care how many, how many accomplishments he has. He's going back to the same place that you came from, and that's the dust. God's the one that deserves the glory. And not only the glory, but he deserves our confidence. How dare we put more confidence in what God's able to do through a man and forget that he's God. When God is with you, listen, your spirit can align itself to a degree that you act like it. That's why David, when, 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 uh, when, when he's out there and they're fighting this giant, listen, he doesn't back up and say, listen, this is too much for me. I can't. He didn't drop. Hey, man, drop it all. Listen, man, I'm going back to the ice bowl about here in the first place. Y'all handle it. No. He says, is there not a... When, they, when, when these trained soldiers can't handle the spiritual matter that's that they're really dealing with, and, and they don't, they out there shaking in their boots, literally. He says, listen, is there not a cause? Somebody need to be down here reminding y'all of who you are. You're a child of God, and you're not fighting your own fight. Since your fight, and then the battle is the Lord. And since it's God, listen, this filthy Philistine hadn't come up against you, really. He's defied the army of the living God. And God ain't gonna have it. Where, where he at? Where is he at? Amen. I'll fight him, amen. Because I ain't gonna really fight him. God's gonna, God's gonna deal with what you're dealing with today. Doesn't matter who your Goliath is or what your Goliath is. If it's a financial issue, if it's a health issue, if it's a relationship issue, God can deal with it. You need to know God can deal with it. And he's already promised. He promised. Listen, he promised whether I said it in this word, whether I said it today as a messenger, he's already declared, I'll never leave you. Even when it feels like it, I'll never leave you. 
I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Even when Jesus, I love this, that when Jesus was on his cross dealing with such a great agony that one of the, it's, it's as if even on the cross, he's in the hands of the Father. He is, of course. But you see the relationship. He's his whole affection. This is why we have to do what the scriptures say in Colossians 3. We must set our affection on things above. Amen. So that, so that when we're on our crosses, all right. Praise God. We can have a Christ-like response. Yeah. 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 When you're going through stuff that yeah. doesn't feel good. Yeah. And it's unfair. It was unfair for him to be on the cross. Yeah. But it was glory that was coming yeah. through him going through it. And so the father turned his back on him so he could see other sons and see you and I coming in, delivered, saved, set free, yeah. eternally. Yeah. Eternally, but he was able, he was able throughout the whole time, throughout the entire time. I love this, the Holy Spirit. Jesus was so tough in, in that he was submitted to the Lord. Get this, that the last thing, last thing he says is, into thy hand I commit my spirit. In other words, I kept my spirit intact even while going through this. I need some help. He said, I kept my attitude, I kept my spirit intact. When they were spitting on me, when they beat me, I kept my I kept my spirit intact. And even when that person tempted him and said, "Call down," he's he's he is, if he who he say is, let him call down. Now I'm gonna keep my spirit intact. I'm not gonna respond to you or this temptation. I'm going to keep my that ain't my job. My job is to stay surrendered to the Father. Because I know he's with I'm not going to act like he's not with me. You need to know that God hadn't abandoned you just because your situations are as they are. God hadn't abandoned you. He's still with you. Amen? All right. Gideon, Gideon, next. He's frustrated only or with only hearing about a God that only seemed to be somewhat of a fictional being out of a folklore or a fairy tale. He was frustrated with only hearing about what God had done while feeling like and looking like God had forsaken him. He's frustrated with this. He's heard all of the testimonies of old, and that's what they were to do. They were to teach their children. That's what God said. When y'all come over this water, you come through this Jordan, and y'all take these stones, take them with you. These stones are testimony of what I did in the Jordan for you. When y'all get over there, the stones ain't for you. Well, they are for you. Mm -hmm. So when you get so discouraged in your promise, yeah. or while headed towards your promise, you can look back and remember what I did for you in the Jordan. Yeah. And you're not overcome while you're approaching new things. He says, so every once in a while, you may have to look back at your stones. Yeah. Right. Amen. And then sometimes when you got young ones coming up and they want to know, well, mama or daddy or auntie or uncle or brother or sister, uh, whoever, what does that mean? You can testify and tell them God brought us. The Lord brought us on. That's the work of the Lord. And so this is all Gideon has at this point. All I have is what y'all told me. But what you all told me and what is right now, two totally different things. If God be the God that brought all y'all through water, if he parted waters, why is he allowing things to be as they are now? He's frustrated with this. And if we be honest sometimes, sometimes, if God can get us to be honest sometimes, listen, we feel the same way. God, I'm hurt. I've got testimonies of my own. But right now, I'm dealing with some stuff that's frustrating because it doesn't look like you're with me. And I'm tired. This is for, for those that are tired of only hearing about and living off other folk testimonies. We're going to let the glory of the Lord rise in this place. Let the door.